um, we've got a dry afternoon this afternoon so I thought I would uh, show you this uh, Charles Pritchard replica dulcimer that was made for me by Kevin Messenger um, and run through a few of the features of the instrument um, and compare it with um, a contemporary dulcimer. First off I'd just like to have a look at the shape of it. Um, it's absolutely beautiful the uh, Pritchard shape and uh, I've not seen any contemporary dulcimers um, actually using this shape. We see a lot of hourglass dulcimers but they tend to have a curve, sort of a, a convex curve um, on the shoulder rather than this concave curve that uh, you can see here on the Pritchards. It's a shame really because it's, it's lovely. Um, another feature that uh, you don't see on contemporary dulcimers now are the fiddle edges where the, the edge overlaps the sides. I'm not sure really why people have stopped using that because again it's a beautiful design feature um, and uh, I suppose it uh, it does, it does actually, I think, make the instrument uh, look far more uh, like a fiddle uh, than a lap guitar. Um, it sort of gives it its own character. Another aspect of the design of the Pritchard Dosmas is, uh, is this one has a sound post and there's a sound post internally that runs from the front to the back to transfer the vibrations directly from the front to the back. And it doesn't actually have any other bracing apart from that. Um, and it ends up being a very, very, very resonant box. Absolutely lovely, lovely tone. Uh, the instrument's made out of um, poplar, uh, and again, that's another feature that you don't see on many contemporary dulcimers. There are very few builders who uh, who use poplar as a as a regular tone wood, and I think it has a, a very earthy tone, and that's perhaps why it's uh, it's not used so much now. Um, it's quite distinctive. And, um, and, qu and quite organic really. Uh, looking at the fretboard uh, you'll notice that the frets don't go all the way across and they're actually um, baling wire staples um, and the reason they don't go all the way across is because only the melody string is actually fretted and again that's a feature of pretty much every old dulcimer everything up to about the 1950s uh, instrument was only ever played on the melody string with the other strings running as drones. The strings themselves, um, I've strung this dulcimer up with piano wire. Um, I've got a number eight on the bass and two number fours. Uh, don't actually know what strings Charles Pritchard himself used but um, I know that uh, other dulcimers of his era around about the late 1800s were using piano wire for their strings and it was quite readily available through things like the Sears and Roebuck catalogue. Um, got a scroll headstock, a uh, beautiful scroll shape, and uh, three wooden tuners. They're a little bit more tricky to use than guitar tuners, but once the instrument's actually in tune, the tuning is very stable on it. Um, the hearts as well on a Pritchard, and also on the Ed Thomases, are the other way up to the way that you see the hearts on contemporary dulcimers. So uh, that's quite an interesting feature and there's probably been some thesis written on that point. Um, another significant point I think are feet on the back of the dulcimer. Now you'll see these on uh, Pritchard dulcimers, on Thomas dulcimers, on in fact pretty much on every single old dulcimer you'll see they have feet. Now you never see these on a contemporary dulcimer, um, but it does suggest that there was a significantly different playing style in the early days, and that as well as being an instrument for the lap and for the porch, that uh, this would have been placed on the kitchen table and um, and played to the family on a on a Saturday night, uh, and it does increase the volume considerably when you put one of these dulcimers on a table. Quite a different playing style from from the way that dulcimers are played today. Um, so um, other features that uh, that differ well, I would say that uh, the strum hollow is quite interesting. Uh, you can see the strum hollow there. Um, both the Pritchard Holzmers, this is a uh, West Virginia, Huntington, West Virginia, uh, Pritchard built these, um, and the Thomas Dolcimers from Kentucky have a strum hollow, but a lot of the other early designs don't. Um, and on a lot of the other early designs you see quite a lot of um, 
damage to the fretboard around about this position here which suggests that they used a Galax style quill for strumming. Uh, the addition of a strum hollow suggests that there was either a vertical quill used um, and we know that um, from the Ed Thomas lineage that he used a vertical quill um, or um, a leather plectrum or a hickory plectrum was actually used so uh, again things like the strum hollow is a good giveaway for, uh, for how an instrument was actually played. So um, say Kevin Messenger made this up, he, I know that he's making a few more and, uh, and if you want to chat to him about it um, I'm sure you can contact him through the Friends of the Mountain Dulcimer website. Um, just remains for me to play a tune on it for you. Thank you.